If you're interested in trying oral minoxidil for hair loss, then you've come to the right place. A recent review paper has compiled every single clinical study ever done and reached a conclusion on its efficacy. And we're going to tell you all about it in today's video. Make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Just before we get into the video on oral minoxidil, if you want to get access to the hair nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. So guys, as you might already know, minoxidil was originally developed as an antihypertensive. In other words, it, it was a drug used to treat high blood pressure. And when it first hit the market in the 1970s, it was actually given as a pill, which is when some of the patients and treating physicians started reporting the unexpected hair growth. We've now had Rogaine on the market for close to 30 years. But all this time, oral minoxidil has been used off-label by doctors around the world to treat hair loss. It might not be the most popular treatment out there, but it is still used to this day. And it actually seems to be prescribed more widely in recent years. And I'm not talking just about male pattern hair loss. Alopecia areata, telogen effluvium, female pattern hair loss, chemotherapy-related hair loss, you name it. Basically, any type of hair loss that you can imagine, oral minoxidil has been tried, just like with topical minoxidil. But exactly how good is oral minoxidil? Well, up to this point, we didn't have a systematic review, until this paper came out in June. It's by a team of researchers out of the US and Brazil. These guys went through the medical research databases to find all studies where oral minoxidil was prescribed for hair loss. And they found 10 research papers, which together involved a total of about 19,000 men and 200 women. So guys, let's see the results for male pattern hair loss. There were three major studies that the review identified. I've linked to all of these studies in the description below for you to check out. Now, the biggest one by far came out of Asia and was published two years ago. There were a total of 18,918 men with androgenetic alopecia. So it was a pretty massive sample. Now, oral minoxidil was given as part of combination therapy. You had a twice daily of 2.5 milligrams oral minoxidil together with twice daily topical minoxidil as well as 1 mg daily of finasteride. The men were also given monthly topical injections with a minoxidil-containing solution. Treatments lasted at least 6 months. Now, as you'd expect from combining all of these treatments, hair regrowth was pretty good. And in many cases, it was actually quite remarkable. This 21-year-old man, for example, had diffuse thinning all over the top of the head. And aside from a coin-sized spot in the vertex, he restored more or less normal density in the rest of the scalp. Similarly for this guy, who was 33, and had a very similar pattern of hair loss. Now, these pictures here are really impressive, because you're dealing with very advanced hair loss, probably around a normal 6. So, a very poor prognosis at 42 years of age. And he was able to reverse this with the treatment. So guys, patient satisfaction was at a whopping 96% after 6 months, which dropped to 80% after 12 months. What about the side effects? Well, I'm going to get back to the side effects in a minute, because they are one of the biggest challenges with oral minoxidil. But in this study, the researchers noted, quote, minor complications in 4.2% of patients. The most common side effects attributed to the oral minoxidil were swelling and dizziness. Guys, what do you think? Does such a low figure seem realistic, given that these men were taking oral and topical minoxidil as well as oral finasteride? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. To us, it doesn't seem quite right. Now, the second major study identified in the review looked at 41 men with androgenetic alopecia. The men were treated with 2.5 or 5 milligrams of oral minoxidil daily for a minimum of 6 months. Overall, about 90% of men had some degree of improvement, and the remaining 10% showed no change. Marked improvement was seen in 27% of patients. These figures are clearly superior to standard topical minoxidil, where you typically get marked improvement in about 10% of users. And the percentage of non-responders in topical minoxidil studies is typically in the 40% range, rather than the 10% that they found here. So, the results are definitely good, there's no doubt about it. But again, what about the side effects? 
Here we get a very different picture compared to the previous study. 29% of men showed side effects, and the most common by far was hypertrichosis. This means unwanted hair growth in other parts of the body outside of the scalp. Typically it's the arms, but you can also get it in the chest, the armpits, the beard, the back, basically anywhere. So this unwanted hair growth was observed in 24% of men, basically one out of every four. A less common side effect is swelling, which was seen in about 5% of men. The last study on men with pattern hair loss that the review identified isn't quite as informative, because some of the patients also had traction alopecia. Overall, a third of the patients said that their hair shedding decreased, and 28% reported new hair. 39% of patients reported hypertrichosis with the face and arms the most commonly affected area. So guys, as I've said, I've linked to this paper below. As I said, it also covers other types of hair loss like alopecia areata, which I'm not going to get into here. In the conclusion to the papers, the authors characterize oral minoxidil as a promising therapy with a good safety profile. Regarding the dilemma of oral versus topical, and I quote, the clinical decision to choose oral over topical therapy is multifactorial. Situations to consider are in patients with severe hair loss with a surface area too large for topical coverage alone multiple topical regimens used, or different synchronization with bathing and activity schedules. So guys, in conclusion, oral minoxidil does work, and you'll probably get more hair compared to the topical. Dosages range from 0.25 to 5 milligrams daily, and men are generally given prescriptions at the higher end of this range compared to women. And taking a pill is obviously more convenient compared to applying minoxidil on your scalp twice a day, especially if your hair loss is extensive. The one major drawback really is the side effects and particularly the unwanted hair growth on the body. There are also some problems with swelling and some potential cardiac complications like an irregular heartbeat. Guys, let us know your thoughts on oral minoxidil. Is it something that you would consider? Or have you actually tried it? We'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. And if you also click the video on the screen now, you can learn more about the eight steps that Will, the founder of HairGuard, used to reverse his hair loss. Thanks a lot.